This video is about how to work between the Adobe Fresco app and Adobe Illustrator on the desktop. Several months ago, I published a couple of videos about working between Fresco and Adobe Illustrator on the desktop, and Fresco has been updated since then, so this video will get us caught up to date for the time being. The great news is you no longer have to deal with the cluster of clipping masks that surrounded every part of your art when it was brought into Illustrator. That's a thing of the past. My previous videos are still helpful though for understanding how you organize layers in Fresco and how that affects what you get when you bring it into Illustrator on the desktop. Okay, so here we go. I'm in Fresco and I've got some floral motifs that I created with both pixel brushes and vector brushes. And I wanna bring this art into Adobe Illustrator. Now, why would I wanna do that? Well, in Illustrator, I can use it in a repeat pattern design. I can recolor it with the recolor artwork feature. I can take the pixel based part of this art and image trace it in Illustrator, which converts it into vectors and makes it totally scalable and very versatile. So pattern designers are really loving Fresco. And for those who also love Illustrator, this is really great. So first let's look at the layers here in Fresco. There are a few things that I want to point out in this artwork so that we know what to look for when we go over into Illustrator. So at the very top here, I have these brush strokes here, and these were created with transparent brushes. If I go ahead and grab my transform tool, you can see when I move it over, these are transparent. Now this transparency was created when I went over into the color wheel and I chose a transparent color here. So that's one kind of transparency. Then here in the flower head here, let me go ahead and open this layer stack here. I don't think there's any transparency in here, but all of this artwork was created using pixel based brushes here in Fresco. So these are some elements that I'm gonna want to image trace when I get over into Illustrator. Then down here, I have this leaf shape that's underneath the main hibiscus flower. And one thing to notice about this is it has a transparency setting applied to the layer itself. So if I go into the properties panel here, we can see the blending mode is set to normal and the opacity of this layer is at 65%. So that's another instance of transparency um, in this file. Then down here, I have the outline of the flower, which was created with a pixel based brush. And then below that, I have the flower petal shapes in that mauve color that were created using a vector brush. And then right here is a sketch and then the white background. All right, so we've seen what's going on in this file. Now let's send it over to Adobe Illustrator on the desktop. And to do that, it's really easy. You just go right here to the export menu and this new feature is called send to Illustrator. Couldn't be easier. So I'm gonna click on that. And what's happening is you can see it's spinning right there. And Fresco is sending a copy of this artwork prepared for Adobe Illustrator. So it's good at this point to have Adobe Illustrator open on your desktop. And we're gonna jump over to Illustrator now and see what it looks like. So now I'm over in Adobe Illustrator and notice we have a dialog box here called Photoshop Import Options. So this is the same box you get when you try to open any Photoshop file in Illustrator. And we have some options here to choose from. I definitely want to leave the option convert layers to objects selected. That way we're not going to be flattening our layers into a single image. Now click OK. And then you have your usual color management questions here. I'm just going to click OK. And let me zoom out here so we can see this. So it looks exactly the same. And I have the layers panel open here. I want to see this better. So let me go down to panel options and let's change this to large and see if that's going to be enough for us. Okay, good. All right. So here we have the entire layer structure. So if you remember what we saw before over in Fresco, this layer group here that represents the whole swamp hibiscus 
um, flower head here, it's inside of this layer group. And then when you turn down the triangle, you're gonna see every single one of the um, drawings here. And they are all pixel layers. These are images. So if I, let's, let's go ahead and select one of these petals here just by clicking on this empty space. So you can see there's a, a bit of a petal there that's selected now. And if I go up to the top control bar, I can see this is an embedded image, transparent RGB, um, and it is 72 PPI. So that's all good information. Now notice that we don't have clipping masks here. So these are just images, a collection of images that are maintaining the layer structure that we set up in Fresco. So this is great. We don't have to deal with the mess of clipping masks and all of these images are ready to go for us. Now, the other thing that I wanted to discuss here is transparency and how Fresco to Illustrator translates transparency. So if you remember, and I'll just zoom in here a little bit, these two brush strokes um, which are located here at the top of the layer stack, they're still transparent. But if I look at this image as I have it selected here in the appearance panel, I'm not seeing any transparency. And also here, this indicator of uh, complex appearance, the target um, that appears next to every layer here is empty. So I'm not seeing that there is transparency applied to this object, but it is transparent. So it's just important to know that you're not going to be able to go in and say, oh yeah, I had this set uh, when I created this brush um, on the color wheel in Fresco to 60% or whatever it was. There's just none of that information there. And then furthermore, if you intend to image trace this transparent brush stroke, the resulting vector shape is gonna be opaque. So you'll lose the transparency setting. That's just something to look out for. The other kind of transparency that we looked at, let me go ahead and close this layer's visibility off so we can actually just see this object here. So here's another image. Um, that I painted in fresco with a vector, I'm sorry, with a, a pixel based brush. And here we have the pixel layer image. And notice that the, the uh, target is shaded here. Um, so that's letting us know there's a complex appearance applied to this. And in this case, it is the transparency. I'm not seeing it here at the moment inside of the appearance panel. And that's because that transparency is applied to the layer. So if you remember back in Fresco, it was applied using the properties panel um, that applied this transparency to that layer. So when I target this by clicking on the target here, now we can see the opacity setting. So if you work with transparency um, in Fresco and you apply it to the layer, you will be able to sort of have your starting point here as 65 and make adjustments to that. If you apply transparency directly to brush strokes using the color wheel and just by dialing down the percentage there, um, you're not going to be able to, uh, you can make adjustments to it, but you won't have that sort of starting point of 65% or that information um, as to how you set it in Fresco. Okay, now let's turn what we have here back on and go down to this example here. So here I have a, a pixel based image on the top. This is the outline of the flower. And then below that I have a vector layer. And when I click on this, I can see each one of these individual vector shapes. So these are immediately usable in Illustrator, scalable, and all kinds of things. So anything you create with a vector brush in Fresco is ready to go once it hits Illustrator. Next, I wanna talk about what you can do with the pixel-based drawings that you create in Fresco when you bring them over to Illustrator and use Image Trace to convert them into vector art. So that's my next video. If you'd like to be notified when it's available, subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and share it. I've been using and teaching Adobe Illustrator for many years, and I always appreciate new viewers and followers. My name is Laura Coyle. Thanks for watching. Thank you.